Just a year or so ago, a road trip through the heart of Wales in an electric car? It would have been non-stop stress glued to your range meter, desperately praying to find a working charger, which was probably only going to be a single lonely 50 kilowatt unit hiding in the corner of a forgotten car park. Well, I've heard it from you time and time again in the comments. Wales is a nightmare for EV charging. And let's be honest, it was a reputation that was well earned. For years, Wales felt like an EV charging desert, a place where only the bravest or most local drivers with home charging dared to wander. Indeed, in some locations where charging at home was sometimes the only charger, were in range. But in the last 12 months, something has changed dramatically. There's been a massive rollout of new public charging points. The Welsh Government, working with private partners, has poured some serious money and a real strategy into fixing the problem. The numbers are staggering. A 25.7% surge in public charges just one year. So is it all talk and statistics? Well, we've been out on the road in the last few months in Wales, in Black Knight, my trusty but old Model S, to find out if range anxiety in Wales is finally a thing of the past. Well, it's easy to forget what it was really like. This feeling wasn't just range anxiety, it was infrastructure anxiety. It was the fear that your entire trip might depend on one single piece of equipment you'd never seen before and you'd pull up to a charger that the app swore was working and vacant, only to find it dead on arrival, or occupied for the next two hours by someone else just as desperate as you. Planning a trip, say from Cardiff up to Snowdonia, was less of a holiday and more of a military-grade logistical operation. It meant juggling three or five different charging apps, a spreadsheet of backup locations, Forgetting the price, just grateful you found one that worked, and saying a silent prayer. And having a Tesla didn't help too much either, as there were just no charges of any brand. Tesla superchargers are carefully plotted for busy areas, and the roads between Cardiff and Snowdonia can well, probably never be described as busy. You'd end up mapping your route, not by the most scenic routes, but by the handful of rapid chargers scattered along the A-roads. During to venture off the beaten path felt like stepping off a cliff. Now, mid Wales was a notorious black hole, a place where charges were so few and far between, it actively discouraged tourism. But it was matched by the population, or almost total lack of one. Tourists and sheep dominate here. You'd see petrol stations everywhere, constant taunting reminder of the freedom you felt that you'd given up until you noticed that most of them were long since closed and they're now the ubiquitous car wash. It created a two-tier system, EV drivers who could charge at home and stuck to local routes and those who simply couldn't rely on the public network at all. Many of you shared stories of being stranded, cutting trips short and the sheer stress of it all. That was the reality. That was the EV charging desert of Wales. So what flipped the switch? Well, this didn't happen by accident. It was born out of the Welsh government admitting there was a problem and launching a powerful strategy to fix it. Back in 2021, they published their electrical vehicle charging strategy with a simple but ambitious vision. By 2025, every EV user in Wales should feel confident they can find a charger when and where they need it. To make that happen, they set some huge targets, like aiming for up to 4,000 rapid chargers alone by 2030. Crucially, they put money behind it. The result is the boom we're investigating this month. It's not complete, but it definitely has started. In the year leading up to October 2025, 780 new public charges were installed, bringing the total in Wales to 3,813. That 25.7% growth was actually outpaces the UK average of 23%. This isn't just about throwing charges at a map. It's a well-funded, concerted effort to bring a real network focusing on strategic roads, towns and rural areas that were left behind. But it's being matched by the private sector. A pub, 
restaurant or tourist attraction, literally in the middle of nowhere, is a captive audience, and many have sprung into action, adding just one or two charges. Most supermarkets at least offer something, even if it is only a 60 kilowatt grid served dual bay, shared power. It will fill you fill your battery. But some have gone above and beyond. Rook Farm is a classic example. It's a popular destination. It has services that would put a motorway services to shame and a very popular farm shop. Instavolt decided to plonk 820 kilowatt Instavolt chargers there. Okay, double-edged sword, great chargers, reliable, plenty powerful for most EVs on the road today, but almost the dearest price in the UK. See what I mean about price? You've got to forget price and just accept it is a holiday and you'll pay more. Tesla also got in on the act because Hollyhead is a popular port for ferries to Ireland. So they've just opened up a supercharger with 12 bays open to all. Our recent road trips are the ultimate test of whether that strategy is paying off for the average driver. To cover Wales is plainly a massive undertaking. There's four clear regions, North, Mid, West and South Wales. But the message here is they're not huge population centres. Take North Wales. It's got nearly 30% of the total area of Wales, but it's got a coastline of 2,500 miles, about 4,000 kilometres, covering 6,172 square kilometres. That's a much smaller population that leads than Leeds that covers a mere 111 square kilometres. Statistically, you'll travel many times further to find the right charger in North Wales than you will in Leeds. And that's made worse by most of the population of North Wales living in a very much smaller area on the coast. Well, getting into North Wales from the north is no challenge. There's a hotel at Cheshire East Services on the M56 that allocates you a fast charger for the duration of your stay at a very nominal charge, about a tenner. Then as we leave England, we immediately find a Tesla supercharger with eight V3 chargers, open to all, just a mile or so away from a dozen Osprey 300 kilowatt chargers. It seems they're very keen to get us into Wales, but from there, the findings are pretty rare until you get right over to Anglesey, about 60 miles away, where you're going to discover that new Tesla supercharger. That's a big gap, with nothing much other than single and dual Instavolt or grid serve dotted about. The standout exception is Rook Farm, with its eight Instavolt 120 kilowatts. Well, the next big centre as we head into Mid Wales is Aberystwyth. This leg presents us with much more desert and little relief apart from a six bay supercharger. We'll head inland and you'll find the odd ones and twos of rapid chargers. This is not a surprise because Mid Wales is populated by 200,000 brave souls. That's smaller than a, a large English town like Stoke on Trent. But despite this, the Welsh Government has set a target of a series of rapid or ultra-rapid chargers no further apart than 20 miles. There is some significant movement over in the east of Wales, right up against the English border in Welshpool, where Tesla is installing a massive 16-bay supercharger. But that's many months away yet. West Wales is a little better with a massive area and a population similar to Leicester. Grid serve give up almost as soon as you leave Swansea with four 360 kilowatt CC2 chargers and a couple of Chadamos. Tesla goes further to command them with 12 250 kilowatts. The only Instavolt heads right across uh, to uh, they've got 420 kilowatts. All the rest are just singletons and doubles. But South Wales does the country proud. Far too many to list individually, but then it has a population of 1.3 million. That's bigger than Manchester and Liverpool combined. Mind. And here it is, what I call progress. This isn't a single sad looking charger anywhere, anywhere. These are multiple locations with multiple CPOs on the same site, like Sarn services on the M4 with Tesla and Apple Green. In fact, Tesla has five superchargers in South Wales, most shared with other CPOs. Pogo charging and Apple Green battle it out to get the most number of charges, with 16 seeming to win the day. The cost is pretty standard, paying is simple, just tap a card. No app, no membership, no hassle. This is the convenience we were promised all along. 
a year ago. I might have had to queue for a single 50 kilowatt unit here. Today, I might have a pick of six, seven, eight, or 10 ultra rapid bays all empty. It's a night and day difference. Have you noticed this explosion of charges in your area, whether in Wales or somewhere else? More importantly, has it been enough to cure your own range anxiety? Drop your story in the comments below. And if you're finding this journey useful, quick tap on the like button is a huge help. It tells me you want more videos like this. Once again, however, like North Wales, the locations are mostly coastal and heading into the valleys. It's much more of an adventure. They are out there, but they're few and far between. The rollout, hopefully, has not finished rolling out. Well, we have ignored for the moment the fast chargers, but here there's been a massive improvement, like real North Wales. Uh, it's got 32 fuse fast chargers in a car park and a bigger expansion down south with networks like Clenergy. Well, these are just simply too numerous to explore on a Welsh wide review. So are we there yet? Has Wales succeeded? Well, not quite. While the 3,813 public charges now in Wales are a huge leap forwards, the government's own strategy says up to 4,000 rapid charges, not fast, rapid alone, might be needed by 2030. We're not there yet. The Welsh Government has been focused on getting rapid charges roughly every 20 miles along all the major trunk roads by 2025 this year. And from what we've seen, they're making incredible progress on that. But demand is soaring. The new 650 million electric car grant has already helped over 25,000 drivers across the UK to make the switch. So the number of EVs on the road is climbing steeply. The infrastructure needs to be not just to catch up, but stay ahead of the curve. Reliability is also everything. It's not just about having charges, but making sure they actually work when you pull up. What is encouraging is that the support is coming from all angles. There's the UK government's 381 million plan to support thousands of additional public charges. There's a dedicated 25 million fund to help local councils install on-street charging solutions for people without driveways. And there's continued investment in those clever off-grid solutions we saw in the mountains. So while the network isn't perfect, the foundations for a truly comprehensive system is now firmly in place. The momentum is undeniable. So has range anxiety in Wales really been cured? I'd say for the vast majority of our journeys, yeah, it probably has. Situation has been utterly transformed. The charging desert is officially in the rear view mirror. A long trip in an EV is no longer a stressful gamble against your battery percentage, but it is a plan. You can look at a map and see a reliable, fast and accessible network that gives you the confidence to go wherever you want. There's still work to do, of course, and that should focus on choice and pricing. It's not ideal to find only one single CPO, nor to find prices up in the 80 plus pence. Only competition will bring prices down. The most remote corners will need more options and the network must keep growing to handle all the new EVs hitting the road. But the fear, that constant nagging anxiety that defined any long distance EV trips in Wales in the past, that has gone. It's been replaced by a feeling of confidence and freedom. I can stop almost anywhere and get a charge, just not always where I want it or what I want the price to be. It just goes to show what a focused strategy and serious investment can achieve in a remarkably short time. Wales is no longer a place to avoid in an EV. It's become a destination. Well, thanks for coming along on this journey. It's been fantastic to see this change firsthand. Don't forget to subscribe for more real world EV tests and deep dives. I generally want to read your stories in the comments. Has the charging situation improved where you live? What are the best and worst charging spots you found? Let's share our knowledge and let me know where we should drive next. <laughs>